Hot News Nathan Glazer, urban sociologist and outspoken intellectual, dies at 95 The New York Titanium By Barry Guin Nathan Glazer, one of the country's foremost urban sociologists, who became most closely identified with the circle of disillusioned liberals known as the neoconservatives, died on Saturday at his home in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He was 95. His daughter, Sarah Glazer Kaduri, confirmed his death. Over more than a half century, Mr. Glazer threw himself into the middle of heated debates over such contentious issues as race, ethnicity, immigration, and education, contributing to a range of professional journals and popular magazines, and writing or editing more than a dozen books. He once said, early in his career, he was a co-author of two seminal works on American society, with and, and with Daniel Patrick Moynihan in 1963. Later volumes, he was also an editor at the magazine's Commentary and the Public Interest, and Doubleday Anchor Books. He served on Pre a child of Jewish immigrants from Warsaw, Nathan Glazer was born on February 25, 1923, in New York City, and spent his early years in East Harlem. His father, Mr. Glazer's interest in urban affairs stemmed directly from personal experience, and his upbringing had an impact on his later ideas. His East Harlem, only a few blocks away was Central Park, where a boy could lose himself in the meadows and woodlands, enjoying a respite from the city's noise and grime. For Mr. Glazer, Mr. Glazer arrived at City College in 1940, near the end of the Great Depression, and at a time when the all-male, predominantly Jewish student body was largely divided into antagonistic leftist factions Eustalinist, Trotskyist, Socialist. Having inherited, after graduation, in 1944, he got a job at the contemporary Jewish record, soon to become commentary. Mr. Glazer, in the presidential election of 1948, he voted for the socialist Norman Thomas, not the Democrat Harry S. Truman. Two groups of thinkers that have had a lasting impact on American culture had a lasting impact on Mr. Glazer as well. The first was the new, while he was at commentary, Mr. Glazer's circle widened. Writers like James, there was an awful lot of talk, Mr. Glazer said, but he had always felt that he was something of an outsider, a junior member at these get-togethers, more like a hanger-on than a full participant. Mr. Glazer's turn to neoconservatism followed an almost paradigmatic path. Throughout the 90s, he had taken a teaching post at Berkeley in 1963, just as the student rebellions of the 1960s were erupting. Opposed to the growing, in 1965, Mr. Glazer became one of the original contributors to the public interest, founded by Mr. Crystal and another friend. The magazine was, it became the most intellectually formidable of the neoconservative publications in the last decades of the 20th century, and one that Mr. Glazer edited with Mr. Crystal from 1973 until its demise in 2005. Mr. Glazer's first marriage, too, ended in divorce. He is survived by, during the battles of the 1970s over busing and affirmative action, Mr. Glazer published Affirmative Discrimination 1975, a landmark statement for neoconservatives and others opposed to government-enforced racial balancing. Mr. Glazer, would, Mr. Glazer was never an entirely reliable neoconservative. He wasn't comfort. One of his books was titled, published in 1988. On most areas of public policy, he said, I consider myself pragmatic, rather than a man of the left or a man of the right. As a social scientist, Mr. Glazer valued hard facts over good intentions. At the same time, this meant that the non-ideological Mr. Glazer could change his mind. In his writings on, in the end, he said, the defense of a radical modernism became the work of an elite that the ordinary person could not understand. During the 1990s Mr. Glazer decided that he had been wrong about the course of integration as set out in affirmative discrimination you that he had been complacent about racial progress in America. And once he had concluded that some kind of multiculturalism was necessary for public education, 
he bowed to what he saw as the inevitable even the most balanced and professional effort to define a curriculum for students in American schools today will place a heavy emphasis on multiplicity and diversity, race and ethnicity. In Mr. Glazer's case, it seemed, a multiculturalist was a neoconservative who had been mugged by reality. Former allies were not pleased. One historian of, yet there was an underlying consistency to Mr. Glazer's political and policy shifts. He had become a pet, but he said this more with sorrow than satisfaction. For if his skeptics late in life he described himself as Ameliorist, and in a statement that can stand as his political testament, he declared I think you must keep on trying, even if you haven't had great success. I think everything Smoking on cooking the hot pot. I get fucking on your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Looking up, open the park pot.